bring this up high. My body is down low. Like right in there. Nice, I really like that. In this video, Ramsey was asked by one of his viewers if capoeira is just a dance that is not applicable to fight in any way. By the way he moves, I assume he's been training capoeira for two to five years. Mialo de Compasso is definitely a very dangerous kick. Let's see how he's going to set it up. I've already known one setup which is used when you go for two kicks to the same side, used by Marcos Aurelio. One to get the partner outside of the range, then he comes back to attack and he gets the other kick to hit him. So, somebody's standing about right here. Okay, if I want to kick him on this side of his jaw or right in front of the face, I'll step over here. Yeah. And as I do that, drop my hands down. My body comes down, leg comes up. Boom! Okay? The great thing about capoeira kicks like this is you don't need to be really flexible to land them. Okay? If I have about 45 degrees of flexibility in my legs, most capoeira players are more flexible than that, I guess by the way we're training. Whenever I step, I want my knee to be turned outside. I think it's a more reliable structure. I don't want any knees to collapse inside. Step here, to the outside. If I can land this knee foot right here, I can hit him in the face with my heel. So I step, I drop, up, boom, right there. And follow through with your body weight. If I want to land on the other side, step, drop. If I can land right here, when this comes up, my foot should land. So he did a 180 degree step. I usually go for a diagonal step. That way I have the highest point of the kick right in front of me, aimed at the partner's face. Up right there, up, over. One thing he does really well here is that he turns his foot sideways, that way the heel will reach the opponent first. Oh, okay. Use some targets, get like some um, Taekwondo paddles. These paddles are great, we use them a lot in trainings. If you never tried them, I really recommend you do. Here he used the double Miyagi Compasso technique that I was talking about earlier. So there's my target, I'm gonna step right there. He's actually holding it upside down. Imagine this is the head, and then cross the When training the paddle, try to hit it at the very end. That way it will have a clapping sound. When it's, it's like this, it's built out of two parts, and when you hit them at the end, they, they make a clapping sound. That way you know you did it right. Body there, one more time. If you land the lead foot, if you plant that in the correct position, you'll land it every time. If I'm out of position, if my foot's over here, I will not hit that target. I'll go right over the head. Yes, that was what I was talking about earlier. So again, there's, there's the head. This foot needs to be right there in relation to it. And then I'll get it with the heel. So we're in boxing range. I step over here. This seemed a little bit too close. If you're in boxing range, I think you need to be flexible in order to reach his head. I think the Miyoji Compasso is more of a mid-range attack. In order to get that heel up to the face. Another great use of this as a face. What you can do if you're really close, instead of stepping forwards to kick, you can step backwards and kick the back leg. It comes with a level change, right? I bring this up high, my body is down low. Right in there. Nice, I really like that. Okay, so one more time, I'm out here. You don't have to do this. This, I believe, will be really unpredictable. In an MMA fight, in fact, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Telegraph it so he sees it coming, shoot it on that ankle pick. Okay, so without a partner, you can practice this in your shadow boxing. This is really nice. He said you should telegraph, you should show your partner that you're kicking up high so you'll get the down low grab of the ankle. Fake up, attack down. Okay, the next move is the armada or the arch kick. You can do this with a straight leg, with a spin, or with a chamber. I find the most effective way that I use this is with a chamber. So, 
from a very close range, like about right here, like right in flinch range, even with a collar tie, bring this up, boom, and I'm slamming the side of my shin into the side of the head. You can practice with your own hand right there. Okay, another way I like to use this is to get his guard up and away from the body. This doesn't seem as it works because he was too close, he had his knee in his face instead of his leg. I don't think it will cause much damage. Up high, boom, to get his guard up here. Okay, it might get him in the head, it might get him in the guard, but the objective is to scare him off to get his arms up high. Boom, so I can follow through. Boom. Yes, here comes again the same concept of faking up and kicking below. Okay, the next couple of technique we're going to show is the hau, otherwise known as the cartwheel. Now this can be a kick. I have seen fights where people violently cartwheeled into the other guy. <laughs> oh my god, this is great. This is going to be interesting. Let's see how he uses the cartwheel as a fighting technique. Position, put pretty much in the center of his guard. I'm going to place this hand next to his hip, this hand on his body. Okay, now it's very important to put your weight on his body and not on the mat. If I cartwheel on the mat, Andrew, I want you to square up with me, just spin around and regard. And that accomplishes nothing, right? But this time I'm going to put my hand on him, put my weight on him, Andrew, do the same thing. Okay, so why was that different? What did you feel? Well, you stopped me from moving that way. Now you just push me over. Yeah, there's a frame on you, right? So, essentially, I move over here. I've got my weight on. So I can move around this way, right? So I've got my hands on his hips here, right guard. See, I can move at the same speed he does. Okay? So as he spins... I wonder what would have happened if he would kick him away while he was doing the cartwheel. So... I guess this could be applicable if you surprise your opponent and he flinches. There's a lot of weight on this hand. It's a straight arm, stiff arm. Now, if you want to be mean and your balance is good, instead of an open palm, you can throw a fist. So I'm not going to throw the fist on Andrew, so just roll out of the way for a moment. If that's Andrew. I think if you punch him in the stomach, he wouldn't feel it much. But if you punch him in the face, it might stun him for a second. Nice, I like how he added all up into a sequence. Capoeira, sort of. <laughs> Capoeira, sort of. <laughs> The next one is the martelo from the floor. Okay, sorry, my Portuguese is rusty, so I don't remember all of the correct names of these in Portuguese. But martelo is basically a roundhouse kick. Okay, I'm on the floor, I'm in an open guard position. It actually seems very applicable. He's standing over me, he got the take down. I want to get back up, I want to kick him in the head. Now there are, there's lots of jiu-jitsu stuff I can do here. I can up kick to the legs, to the body, max kick, climb here, and boom, do that sort of thing. But what if I want to stand up as I up kick? I'll make a little bit of space, start to get up, you know, your technical get ups to get back up on your feet. I'm going to make some space, right? He's given me enough space where I can land the kick to his head. And yes, you can head kick from the floor with this much. I think he has more flexibility than what he shows here because here he shows it in a passive range and passive flexibility versus dynamic flexibility is very different. So I elevate here, boom, head kick right there. Elevate like a get up, boom, head kick right there. So there's his head, he's, he's leaning over there. And I get up with that. So again, get up. This movement actually happened just a few weeks ago in UFC. One fighter was holding the other partner's leg as he was sitting and he jumped over his leg and kicked him in the face. So I'll try to do this slowly. In fact, let's film that in slow motion. I recommend you chamber your leg, meaning you bend your knee. And then only when you need, you snap 
or you release the kick that way I think it will be stronger. Andrew's not the most flexible guy in the world, but he's throwing head level kicks from the floor, right next to my head. So again, my Portuguese is rusty. I do not really I'm not sure this is the best movement you want to use in your fight. Portuguese, but it's, it's a three-legged back kick. It's a three-post back kick. So if I do a quick retraction with a punch, he's still there. If I push him out of the way, it moves him. So if my goal is knock back power, lock out. So again, turn, turn. This is a very important concept that I also teach my students when they want to hit something they need to aim over the thing let's say this is a person if you're going to kick until here you're not going to move it you need to kick over here so you can keep on pushing it if you watch practitioners of uh, capoeira angola however you say that capoeira yeah. angola extra african style because it all originated in africa but um You'll notice a lot of these guys grapple as well as all the fancy kicks. And you don't always see that in the, uh, the more westernized version of Capoeira. So you might see in the Jenga, they're moving their hands like this. What is that position? Okay, we're moving from a squared up wrestling stance to a staggered stance. I've never seen anything position. like this Where being taught in Capoeira. The other is his head, right, which is what we would want to do. If we're going to shoot for the legs, if his head is under my head, underneath my head right there, posture unbroken, of course, now he's got an advantage. He's got a lower center of gravity. Right? So I want to get lower than him right? so that I can sit down and get under. So a lot of basic wrestling, basic shadow wrestling, is incorporated in top wider movements, the hands. Right. This I've never seen any type of wrestling in Capoeira Angola. It's mostly used in Capoeira Journal when we use a takedown called Astão, which is a double leg. As I see it, the Jinga is mostly to fake movements or to create an unpredictable pattern. That way your partner or opponent won't know what you're up for next. The weight of my upper body into my leg, similar to how Dutch kickboxers would launch their upper body forward with a straight leg leg kick in order to amplify the power of that kick, but just to a greater extreme. So as opposed to thrusting the body forward like a violent sit-up on a round kick, I am throwing my body upside down to drive this leg upward with the whole weight of my torso and head. Now, if I'm standing behind this, the footwork is very simple. Boom, step over here, off to the side of your opponent. Let's say this is his head. I want to kick him in the head. I'm right here. Boom, step over there. That's the footwork. The great F word of fighting. If you really want to learn how to generate more power with this kick, you need to learn how to loosen your body going with one hand and not with both hands at the same time that way you can use the rotational force into your kick very confusing to some people footwork just means where you place your feet for any specific technique so the footwork boom Ramsey, I want to thank you for creating this video and getting more exposure to the art of capoeira it has a lot to offer to martial artists and people outside of that scope as well. Now watch here how Conor McGregor uses capoeira techniques in his fight game.